Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. This is Natalie with Natalie's Closet and today I am going to be going over some fiber information. So I'll be right back. So welcome back everyone. As I said, this is Natalie with Natalie's Closet and today I'm going to be going over some fiber information uh, to continue on from a couple videos ago or a couple Mondays ago where I went over the basic fibers that most everybody is familiar with. Well, there's a lot of information that I've been collecting and making notes on and uh, I will be going over um, Merino, Superwash Merino, Alpaca, and BFL, but that's going to—that's not today because there's so much information and, and also a lot of people want to know the differences between those, etc. So in order to keep the videos shorter versus having two longer videos, I'm going to try to do it in four shorter videos. Um, and see where it goes. It may happen faster than that. I'm, I'm not sure, but I am going to try to keep this video not too short, but relatively short. Um, so I did make copies of a couple of things, but for the most part, I did do a lot of note taking. And um, yeah, so the first thing that I wanted to go over, and I'm going to be do, I, I'm going to have to do a lot of reading because there's just too much information for me to be able to remember it all. But I do love that many of you guys have asked, um, or not only asked, but are have been interested in actually getting information about things like not just saying, okay, let's talk about silk. This is what it is. Also, you know, maybe a little bit background background information on it. Now, the first thing I'm going to go over is actually five unusual types of yarn. I don't know that they're that unusual, but you may not have known that you can wear some of these um, and or where they came from. This isn't this isn't necessarily going deep into the yarns or the fibers, but it's just I thought some interesting information. Now, I mean. Clothing and, and, and things that we make obviously have to come from somewhere and crocheters and knitters um, know that depending on where the fiber comes from, it can really make a difference in the quality of the item and also give it certain aspects that we're looking for, like for warmth or something to be lighter, that type of a thing. Well, there are five, they, they consider these to be strange fibers. I don't know that I would say strange, uh, maybe not as often heard of or thought of maybe, but number one is camels. Uh, unlike, and I'm going to be reading a little bit more here, so I apologize for looking down, but unlike the one humped drone dairy camel, which occupies arid regions like in the Sahara Desert, uh, the two-humped Bactrian camel lives in cold climates, particularly in Mongolia. Uh, they are tended by nomadic herders. These camels grow a thick, warm coat to protect them from the cold. It's the fur on their underbellies that's the softest. Though they um, and gathered, they're ga the fur on their underbellies are gathered by the herders when the camels shed their coats in the spring. The downy fibers are then spun into a yarn notable for being remarkably lightweight, soft, and warm, which I have heard that camel yarn is nice to work with. Now, I've never used camel. I don't know that I have recently even, I think I may have seen camel when I was going through different Etsy shops and stuff, but um, I I can't say that I've actually held a yarn that had camel in it to be able to say anything myself. But from what I have heard, it is soft and it is good for warmth. Now, number two is the musk ox, which is, um, I, I think he's not a funny looking animal, but it, it yeah, a little bit. Anyway, uh, the cut, it says the coveted wool of the musk ox comes from the layer of under wool closest to its body called, <laughs> Kivit, I think is what it is. Kivit, 
that's it, kivet. Um, kivet is valued for its strength and warmth, and unlike sheep's wool, it doesn't shrink. That I thought was interesting, because a lot of times people think of wool and shrinking, but um, it doesn't. A, mu a male muscat can produce up to seven pounds of kivet a year. When the animal molts, the kivet is plucked from its coat and salvaged from the objects it has rubbed against. Talk about a job. Could you imagine going around and plucking it from its coat and salvaging it from the object it's rubbed up against? So as it's rubbing up, you're going and, and, and really? I mean, that, I don't know. I don't know that that would be a job for me, <laughs> but obviously it is a job that is had by somebody. Um, you can buy high quality kivet accessories, but it's very expensive. I mean, depending on what it is, it could put you back a couple hundred dollars. So it's obvious, it's not something necessarily that you would see often, but it was considered one of the strange ones. So then number three is sugarcane. And I was interested in this one because we talked about that recently. Uh, and like, for instance, I have, I think like five hanks of yarn that's viscose made from sugarcane that I'm planning on using for a top for myself at some point. I don't know when that's going to happen, but at some point. Uh, but it says when the fluid used to make edible sugar is extracted from sugar cane, there is fibrous plant material left over called the, oh my gosh, I just looked this up. I think it's um, bagus, bagus. I looked it up specifically so I remembered and I didn't write it down phonetically. So I apologize, but it's B-A-G-A-S-S-E. I think it was bugass, bugass, I think. Okay, that sounds bad. But anyway, in a process referred to as viscose process, the bagus, I don't know, that's how I'm going to say it, is shredded, broken down, and shot while in liquid form at high pressure through small holes. The long strand of fiber is then solidified and spun into yarn and dyed to add color. Sugarcane yarn is silky with a lustrous sheen and perfect for eco-friendly yarn fanatics. And it is, it is silky and it does have a great sheen. The yarn that I have is beautiful and I got it because when I got it from my local yarn shop a long time ago and she knows that I'm oftentimes overheated and <laughs> sweat. Just, it, that's just what it is. That's the reality of it. And so I asked her for something that would be lightweight and also relatively breathable, I guess. And she said that that would be a great option. So that's why I went ahead and get, got it. Now, number four is seaweed. Yes, I know you're probably wondering, wearing seaweed, really? Yeah. Um, I've actually been looking on Etsy shops to find sea cell, which I'll mention that in a second. But I know there are there are some, and there's there's a brand called Katya, and they and there's a a sea cell and cotton combo. Um, I was trying to find something that was sea cell mixed with something else versus cotton. I am going to check with my local yarn shop to see if she carries that brand and if she happens to have the cotton sea cell just so I can um, feel it. But I was also looking for something that had a little bit more sea cell in it. But the options that I was finding on Etsy, like for a hank, and typically it was 400 and 400 yards and under for like 40 bucks plus shipping and that's just not something I'm looking to spend right now but I would love to be able to try working with it because I've heard it's off I mean it's really good nice to work with but it says if you combine crushed seaweed from the shores of Iceland with cellulose fibers from eucalyptus trees you get sea cell or seaweed yarn Sea cell purportedly makes the benefits of seaweed wearable by releasing beneficial nutrients directly onto the wearer's skin, including calcium, magnesium, and vitamin E. I found that interesting. According to Chinese medicine, seaweed can also help boost your immune system, reduce blood sugar, and revitalize your skin, hair, and nails. Guess it's a good thing I like seaweed. I get like the packages of seaweed, and then I, I'll like take some rice and I just wrap the rice with some seaweed and just eat it. So maybe I need to start eating it a little bit more. It's obviously beneficial. 
Best of all, it's completely organic, renewable, and one of the most breathable fabrics on the market, which is why high-end athletic stores like, oh, that they were talking about a store that carries it. But you want to hear number five? I would like to know from anyone here that's watching if you've ever heard of number five and if you have, have you ever considered getting yarn made from it? And if you've considered it, have you actually done it and have you used it? That is something I am very interested to know because I never even realized this was something that can happen. Or I mean, I, got, I don't know. Under, I don't. I, woo I don't know why I was so wowed by this because so many fibers come from animals. But number five is your pet. Yeah. I don't know if anybody else went, what, when you heard that? But when I read it, I was like, what? Yeah, it says, if you've ever wanted a sweater as soft as Fluffy's fur, here's your chance. If you collect your pet's fur and send it in to VIP fibers, or very important pet fibers, you can have it spun into yarn and even made into a keepsake accessory or article of clothing. Or there's Wolf Spun, which specializes in making yarn and garments out of dog fur, and even Caddyshack Creations, which makes fetching little handbags from yarn spun from your cat's fur. Interesting. Wouldn't you say? Do you know how much fur I had from my girls, Abby and Bella? That Well, I mean, I saved a little bit of it when they passed away and stuff, but I, when I used to, I mean, I could sit there and brush them and have a full Publix bag, like a grocery bag, filled with their fur and I could continue to brush them for another four hours and get like three more bags. And I could do that every single day. I mean, I don't know, I mean, yes, they have multiple layers of fur, but oh, Miley does not shed like that. She doesn't shed like, shed like a German shedder does. Yes, my girls were called German shedders because there were tumbleweeds everywhere and fur everywhere all the time i mean i was constantly vacuuming or sweeping up or whatever miley does shed but not anywhere near like my girls did but i could have had something made out of their fur what i don't know i eh. i kind of have a mixed feeling about that but i thought that i think that does qualify for one of that that was definitely something that qualified to be on the five um, unusual types of fibers. But again, let me know, have you ever heard of that? Have you ever considered it? If you have considered it, have you actually done it? Do you have an article of clothing that is made out of your pet's fur? I'm just curious to know that. Um, okay, now I'm watching the time because I'm trying to keep it at a certain time frame because I'm trying to test something. So if I don't get to... Um, both of these that's fine i'll just add one of them onto the next and it's in i'm not doing it in any particular order where it's something like i'm not starting with something that you may have heard of more or more regularly or you know it, i'm i just kind of grabbed the notes that i was able to make that didn't have a thousand different things i wanted to include if that makes sense so this one is angora wool which we were talking about how like with my mom, they used to use Angora fight, like yarn and wrap it around the inside of the boys' rings when they were, because back then when they were dating, like my dad gave my mom his ring and it was too big because typically men's fingers are bigger than women's. And so they would wrap Angora on the inside to tighten it, which that brings me to the story I wanted to tell you a while back, but um, wasn't able to incorporate it easily into the conversation without it being like what where'd that come from but um, my mom felt really bad because one time when she went to the ladies room which I don't know if it was with her friends or not but when she went to the ladies room she took off her ring or took off my dad's ring to wash her hands she forgot it on the sink um, and when she realized that she freaked out and she ran back to go find it and it was gone and she felt so horrible. My dad is such a, was such a relaxed guy and easy, 
um, easygoing and you know he's like don't worry about it whatever but she felt horrible about that but yeah and then on my high school graduation my dad my dad and I are Pisces and he back when my mom he and my mom had gone I think to Mexico he had a pendant made out of um, what is it called like nugget gold I mean it looked like the like not flat gold it was like nuggety like around the Pisces fish and on a gold chain and it was on a gold rope chain and on my high school graduation he gave it to me because like I said we're both Pisces I'm, I was born two days before he was and I loved it because I always loved that necklace and I love that we shared that we were Pisces and so he gifted that to me and I mean that meant like everything to me right well when I was working at a Mexican restaurant and I was a corporate trainer and I was in North Carolina opening a store up there and I don't know what I was thinking but I mean I was young um, but I had taken off my jewelry and had it on the nightstand at our hotel and my roommate roommate and I went to go get breakfast well we came back I picked up my jewelry put it in my bag because I mean we basically partied like the whole time that we weren't working and we were working like 12 16 hour shifts like every day seven days a week so I mean we were running on adrenaline after like the first two days but I grabbed the jewelry off the nightstand we went to the restaurant I was I was sitting in the booth and I was putting on my makeup and yeah I know but that's what I did uh, and I was putting on my jewelry and then I real that's when I realized my necklace was gone and I freaked out I called my mom I was crying hysterically I couldn't believe it I, I did a police report because it was stolen um, and they they questioned a few people that it could have been that had access to the room during that time of course nobody said that they took it I checked everywhere on the bed everywhere I know for a fact it was on the nightstand because I remembered it being there when we left the room for breakfast but I was so upset till this day it kills me that I lost that necklace because my dad passed away back in 07 and that was like something that really was very special to me but anyway okay I just went that just made this video like go a lot longer so I'm gonna try to wrap it up with the Angora but anyway those were two stories that I wanted to go which kind of went hand in hand in my head but yeah anyway so Angora um what is Angora wool uh I'm hoping I can read my notes uh, Angora wool is very fluffy and luxurious fabric that comes from Angora rabbits Angora is considered a luxury fiber alongside mohair and cashmere, and it is popular for with wool, popular wool for spinners and knitters alike. Which I knew, I knew that it was definitely um, obviously because it's not a fiber you often see. I knew that it was special, but I really never thought of it as a luxury fiber like cashmere. But it makes sense uh, and then angora wool comes from the fur of angora rabbits I already said that the fiber is very thin it definitely has a halo effect which creates a shiny quality on any items made with angora um, the halo essentially refers to the yarns fluffiness which we all know what we mean when we see the, when we talk about the halo on a yarn but the finished product look like looks like it has a layer of fluff surrounding it and I, I did write down that Angora is soft and luxurious like cashmere and alpaca, and it is often blended with other types of wool to add softness and its signature halo, but it's also combined with other fibers to keep the cost down as well. Uh, the characteristics of Angora wool is its lightweight. Um, because the fibers are hollow, it makes it lighter. Um, warmth angora can be even warmer than standard sheep's wool which I didn't know due to the hollow fibers it's basically an insulator uh, another characteristic is felt angora is very easily felted and can even felt on the rabbit itself if it's not regularly groomed I found that kind of interesting and it's rigid angora is usually mixed with more stretchy fibers to give it a little el elasticity because it, on its own it's not very oh, it doesn't have a lot of elasticity. <laughs> uh, 
Oh, you may ask, where does Angora come from? Angora wool comes from Angora rabbits, which are almost exclusively found in China, with some exceptions in Europe, Chile, and the United States. There are five different types of Angora, English, French, German, Satin, and Giant. Uh, each breed of Angora rabbit produces slightly different wool. Uh, the English Angora is the smallest of the Angora rabbit breeds, and it has extremely fine guard hairs, which are generally coarser hairs that protect the animal coat. Guard hairs aren't generally used for the final textile, though. And then French Angora rabbits have thicker guard hairs, which means their undercoat is more woolly. But since they molt naturally, the fibers can be easily plucked around the guard hairs. The animal has great halo fur, meaning it has extra fluff, and French Angora's fur is great for hand spinners as a result. I believe from what I was reading, the French Angora is the softest um, of, the four, of the five. And then there's Satin Angora that doesn't produce as much wool as the French and English Angora, but the coat is very shiny and the fiber is great for spinning. Then the giant angora is the biggest angora and it produces the most fiber per year. However, the giant angora doesn't naturally molt. So more often than not, the fur must be um, sheared off the rabbit. And then the German angora is similar to the giant angora in that it produces large volumes of full, uh, wool, but it doesn't naturally molt. So again, needs to be sheared. I really hope this information is interesting to you and that, that you guys are actually getting something from it versus just like, because I, I, as much as I'm okay with like, okay, somebody gives me a hank of yarn, which I just caked this. This is the yarn that I showed you guys on Monday. I'm really hoping that it's going to work for the Lost Souls scarf, which I just got the um, pattern for. But yeah, but anyway, like if somebody hands me this and says, this is um, superwash merino, cashmere, and silk. Okay, great. Well, I have oftentimes wanted to know like where does it come from or what is the benefit of these things being together type of a thing now what i am going to do is and as i said as i'm getting these yarns that i'm expecting from different yarn companies you okay miley um as i get these yarns and i'm going to show them as i get them but then i'm going to do a video where i go through all of them a little bit more go through the benefits or, or the qualities of each fiber that's in each hank and what gives it what, like nylon gives it strength, you know, that type of thing. But, um, yeah, that's going to be a video on its own. But I like to kind of know where the, where or how these things came to be and what it does or what is the benefits of it, if any, and how it affects the the final product that it is that I'm using. So I don't know if that's something that interests you, but you guys have always expressed interest in any of the like background information stuff that I share with you. So I hope you are. Um, how is Angora wool produced? Angora rabbits molt three or four times a year, and Angora, Angora wool is gathered during molting season. Um, harvesting Angora involves plucking or shearing the rabbits on Angora farms. Plucking is the superior technique. It ensures fewer guard hairs are retrieved, which are more coarse. Um, also, the fur is not as matted when plucked. However, it's a very time-consuming process, uh, so some farmers resort to shearing. Um, the rabbits need to be groomed once or twice a week, so matting and felting doesn't occur. I thought that was actually pretty interesting as well, because if they're not um, groomed while the fur is on them, it can get all matted and stuff, which, I mean, makes sense. I mean, just like our pets, but I just thought that was interesting. And um, now this is another thing that I had written down, the difference between Angora wool and mohair. I'm like itching all over all of a sudden. I don't get it. Seriously, I don't get it. Okay, sorry. Uh, what is the difference between Angora wool and mohair? Uh, the main difference between mohair and Angora is Angora wool comes from Angora rabbit, while mohair comes from the Angora goat. Both are very strong and resilient with a silky and soft nature, but I, I found that interesting. Honestly, I really never knew that there was an Angora goat. So, because I was like, well, what do you mean? What's the difference between Angora and mohair? That, 
they're different. I mean, I never thought of them to be the same or, you know, similar, but that is what the difference is. So I'm going to end this here and then I'll pick up with, I was going to go over um, Tusa Silk, uh, but I'm going to do that with the next video because we're already getting at 25 minutes roughly now. Uh, so again, let me know if this is actually something that is of interest to you. Did you enjoy it? Are you liking getting to know more about the fibers that you, I know not everybody is working with these fibers, but you may, you may be gifted a yarn that has these fibers in it. Or you may decide one day you're going to pick it up or whatever the case is. But is this of interest to you? Do you like getting to know more about these fibers? And let me know in the comment section below. And again, remember, let me know if you've ever considered having your pet's fur turned into yarn and made into something for you. <laughs> I'm really interested to see the answers I get for that. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Um, if you did, I would really greatly appreciate a thumbs up because that lets not only me know that you're interested in this information, but it also lets you to know that this video was of interest and then lets them decide to go ahead and share it with a broader audience. So have a great day. Um, I know I had to cancel my live last night because of Wi-Fi issues. I'm going to try to hop on another evening this week. It may even be at my mom's so that I have a better signal. Um, but ha otherwise, I'll see you on Friday for getting to know you. Have a great day. Stay safe and healthy. Love, hugs, and prayers to everybody. Extra prayers for those that need it. Please let me know if you do. Remember, for every season, there's a reason to crochet. And Miley says hi and bye to her peeps. She was sad that she didn't get the attention that she wanted last night, but she was fine. Um, my mom also says hello to everybody and thank you for continued birthday wishes. And remember, I do still have my mom's birthday month giveaway going until September 30th at midnight. Um, so, um, yeah, make sure you, I'll put the link in the description box below to that video. So if you haven't entered, make sure you go check that video out and answer the question that is for that giveaway. Also, oh my gosh, I forgot... <laughs> I forgot about subscriber of the week again. What is my problem? I forgot to do it on Monday because Monday was all different with the, yeah. So I did, of course, draw a winner. Um, and the winner is... Congratulations, Thunder Above Creations. I'm really excited that you are my subscriber of the week for last week. I apologize for not having announced this on Monday. I don't know where my head has been, but I did <laughs> announce it today. Although you did also um, uh, mention the, you, you partially answered the extra credit. The extra credit, remember I said you had to be very specific and I, I was trying to turn my head each way. Now, several of you got that there was an extra set of earrings. Somebody said that there were two earrings in the left ear. That's where I was saying specifics for the extra credit. On top of the, the dangle pearl earrings, I had the pearl studs in my second holes and then I have a third hole on my left ear and that had a diamond stud in it. And that's what I was looking for, but nobody actually got both. It was either two earrings in the left ear, but you, you didn't see one on the right, or you just saw the pearl studs. So anyway, thank you so much for taking part. I appreciate it. I love seeing how much you guys, or if you guys are noticing stuff. And I cannot wait until October for the subscriber of the week, because I think it's going to be a lot of fun. So anyway, congratulations again. I'm so excited. Make sure you email me at natalies.closet at yahoo.com. The link is in the description box below with your email. I'm sorry, your mailing address so I could go ahead and send you your card. Um, so have a great day, everybody. Again, I love you all dearly. Thank you so much for your support. I really greatly appreciate it. And I will see you guys on, or you guys will see me on Friday. Have a great day. Bye.